Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're making a stingray. So, this adorable little guy, this one is just over a foot long, if I stretched out the tail a little bit, but we got a little curvy thing going on because it's cute. And then fin to fin, it's about ten and a half inches. So, perfect size for the little hammerhead shark, which is what I, what, which was requested. So this yarn here, I'm going to tell you. I'm not using this yarn for the video today, uh, even though it's super cute. Look at, look at the colors. I love the way it worked out. This is a Red Heart Super Saver, and it is Parrot Stripe. This is hard to find. I actually had to go to yarn.ca to find the Parrot Stripe. It is very hard to find. This is generally the one you can f find in stores. And the parrot stripe, um, there is the cake. It doesn't come in cakes. It comes in rolls, by the way. Super heart, a uh, red heart super saver comes in rolls, seven ounce rolls. But in this video, I decided I wanted to use this chunky velvet. This is, the color is called Omphalodes. I, I don't know why anybody would do that. Um, what do I got going on here? This is Loops and Threads Sweet Snuggle Light. That's the tag. It calls for an eight millimeter. So it's, it's a chunky, chunky one. I don't know if it's a five or a six. I don't recall. But that's what it is anyway. Sweet Snuggles. It comes in an 8.8 .8 ounce ball, which we're obviously not going to need all of. So um, I'm going to stick to the same pattern that I used for this little guy. But if you just want him to be as small like this, uh, to go with the Hammerhead Shark, which was the request, um, then you're just going to do it in this four weight because this Parrot Snuggle is just a four weight. It's almost on the worsted side but it's not worsted. It's just four weight, but it is a little fluffy four weight. So you will get a decent size um, like this little guy. Uh, or just use worsted weight if you don't want to, obviously the, the, variegate, the variegation. Um, and do you just want a solid color? Just use a, a thicker four weight or a worsted weight yarn. The hook I used to make this guy is a 4.5 but I think this guy, I'm going to use a 7. It does call for an 8, but I, I do build this in amigurumi. So I'm going to go down in hook size. So if you're looking at making something this size, then it's going to be the exact same pattern, just with um, a different hook and different yarn. So I'm going to go big this time. I'm really excited about, about this. So let's get into it. So I'd like to add one more thing thing I am using these 16 millimeter eyes on this on this little guy these are 12 millimeter safety eyes so I'm gonna go with the big guns okay okay so like I said I'm using this big thick stuff with my number seven um, if you're using uh, regular four weight or four weight worsted and whatever hook the yarn calls for just go down and hook size a bit just so it's a bit of a tighter weave if you crochet tight to begin with then you don't need to worry about going down in hook size so we're going to start by making a slip knot and we're going to chain 15 I'm going to do 13, so we're going to work in the round with this with this chain. So I'm going to work 13 single crochets, 
starting in the first space. You have 14 working stitches. So single crochet all the way up till you have one stitch left. So that's my 13 single crochet. I have one stitch left. And in that stitch, I'm going to put four single crochets all in the same space. You're going to watch it curve around, and I want you to follow that curve so we can work on the other side. That's what working in the round means. So put four single crochets in, in this last space. Follow the curve around. So you're going to want to still tighten your, your stitch, your, your slip knot because it does, it will open. So right here where your slip knot is, make sure you're getting into this stitch right after it. And you're going to do 12 single crochets. That's my 12 single crochets, and I'm going to cut off my little straggler. I didn't quite get weaved in, just so it doesn't irritate me. So you do have one stitch left, and I want you to put four single crochets into that last stitch. And you'll see it work around. So if you're using um, this stuff like I am, your next two stitches, putting four stitches in there, is going to partially cover the stitch you need to get into. There is a stitch right there. So let's go ahead and get into that stitch with two single crochets. Let's use a marker and on this first stitch that you did, so go back one, put a marker on that stitch. So this first stitch has two single crochets and I know it's super duper squishy if you're using the blue the blue f fluffy stuff like I am but so now I just want you to do 13 stitches 13 single crochets So we've got these three stitches here at the top and I want you to put two single crochets in each of those stitches. I almost yarned over for some reason. So two single crochets in each stitch. So just count to six. And now I want you to crochet one single crochet in each stitch till you get back over here and you have two stitches left. So that's my 14 single crochets and I have two stitches left and I'm going to put two single crochets in each stitch. So I'm just matching the other side. So because the stitch markers here, you know there's a stitch there if you're using the fluffy stuff like me. <sighs> Holy cow. So for the next two rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each stitch. So that's my two rows. Uh, mine obviously <laughs> way bigger than yours. I'm excited to see what size this turns out. I think my little uh, grandsons are going to love this big, warm, cuddly guy. 
So your next round, we're going to start with two single crochets in this first stitch. So of course, after the first stitch, that's where your marker goes. Uh, then you're going to do 15 single crochets. So, over the next four stitches, so these guys right here at the top of this curve, you're going to put two single crochets in each of these. So, eight stitches. This is how we increase. And then I want you to do one single crochet in each stitch till you've got three stitches left over here. So we used four here, but that's why we started our two single crochets in this stitch. So that would be the fourth stitch technically coming from this side. In case you're wondering why it seems uneven, but it seems to be working out. So 16 single crochets. So that's my 16 single crochets. I've got three stitches left. I'm going to put two single crochets in each of them. Alrighty. And now I just want you to put one single crochet in each of what should be 47 stitches. And then we'll start making the fins. So this is what you should have. There's probably something smaller because <laughs> you're using a regular size yarn. So I need to talk to you about what's going to happen next. Next we're going to be making the fins. Everything is is crocheted together is one piece so nothing is sewn on so we are building the fins on um so i've added something to the pdf so if you're following my pdfs if you're a member um and you follow my pdfs the pico decrease is what we're going to be incorporating in this and this is just kind of to fill in a, a gap so to speak so we're going to be incorporating that into the next round. Basically, you slip your hood into the two pieces of yarn like you're doing a pico. So if anyone knows what you're doing, how to do a pico, the, the two pieces of yarn. Now I'm going to show you. So don't worry about it. I'm just trying to, to experience people. I'm just trying to explain what it is in case you don't know. But it, most people probably do know. So you're just um, using the two bars that you would pico into but after you pull up a loop instead of doing a slip stitch you're going to go into the next stitch and complete like you're doing a decrease so that's what a pico decrease is going to be and it's just to um, join together something without a gap so that being said your first round is going to be 21 single crochet, well not your first round, your first bunch of stitches is going to be 21 single crochets. That's number one. So, 21, 
when you lay it down, that's where your 21st stitch is, which is a basically right, right here on this side. If you laid it down to look like that, sorry. I guess it helps if I zoom out a titch. So that's 21 stitches. Now I want you to chain 13. That's my 13. And I want you to do 12 single crochets all the way back down. You only have 12 working stitches. The 13th one is still on your hook. So every single stitch gets a single crochet. This is my 12th, so I'm down at the bottom. And right here is where we're, we were talking about the Pico decrease. Let's make sure I'm all the way zoomed in. So these two bars right here, this one and this one, is going to be used for the Pico part. And then we'll complete it like a decrease using this next stitch right here. So you're going to go into these two bars and then complete it using this stitch. So we're doing a pico decrease. So take your hook, slip it into those two bars, pull up a loop. Now a normal pico you would slip stitch. We're not doing that. You're just pulling up this loop. So pull up a loop and then go into the next stitch pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through all three. That is a pico decrease, and that's just so you have no gaps in here. And that is our first fin. So now you're going to do 23 single crochets. So 23 brings you to the exact same spot because there's where our hole is and it's just on the one side and you're going to chain 13. And you're going to do 12 single crochets back down. So this is my 12th stitch and we're at the pico decrease spot so we're going to pico, pull up a loop, go into this next stitch, pull up a loop and then decrease. So pull through all three and then one single crochet to end the row. And now we've got our two fins started. So your next round is going to be 31. We're still going to keep increasing uh, a little bit. So um, this next round starts off with 31 single crochets and then we get into a an increase. So this is my 31 stitches and I'm right here where I've got these two stitches here at the top. 
And I'm just going to put two single crochets in each of these two stitches to increase this guy at the end because this is going to be the end of his fin. So two single crochets in each of those two stitches. And then I want you to do 45 single crochets which should take you to the top of this other fin where you're going to do the exact same thing. So that's my 45 stitches and I've got these two stitches at the top. I'm going to put two single crochets in each of those. And then I want you to do 13 single crochets back to your marker. There we go. So we can put the eyes in any time that we want to. Um, I never actually, oh, I do put the eyes in, but like it's way down between rows 22 and 23. And currently we are on the, we're on the ninth row. So this one starts off with 32 stitches. That's my 32 stitches. So these next three stitches, you're going to put two single crochets in each stitch. And then I want you to do 47 stitches to the other side. So I'm all the way over here to the other side and these next three stitches you're going to put two single crochets in each of them. And then it's 13 single crochets back to your marker. So your next round is going to be one single crochet in each stitch. You should have 103 stitches. So just one round of one single crochet in each stitch all the way around and I will see you on the other side. So, I counted 104, <laughs> so I think I have an extra stitch, but that's okay. So your next round, we're going to start with 20 single crochets. So I'm right at the area where I go from body to fin and I'm going to do SC three talk. So that means to single crochet three together. So that means you go into the first stitch, pull up a loop, 
second stitch pull up a loop and the third stitch pull up a loop and you're going to yarn over and pull through all of those loops so then I want you to do 26 single crochets That's my 26th stitch and I'm at the crook of the fin and the body and I want you to do a C3 tog again. And then I want you to do 20 single crochets. That is my 20th single crochet and I'm at the crook of the fin and the body on the other side so I want you to do a single crochet three together and then 25 single crochets and do the SC3 tog again That is my 25 single crochets. I'm going to do SC3 tog again and this should take you right to your marker but I have this extra stitch so it did not take me to my marker. I have one extra stitch so when I start the next round um, which is just one single crochet in each stitch I'm just going to decrease these two just so I get back to my number count so your next round is just going to be one single crochet in what should be 95 stitches and I will see you on the other side. So I'm back around. I have 95 stitches. I had to do a decrease in there just so I got caught up on the right number. So I have 95 stitches. We're going to do the same um, decreases as we did. We're going to decrease in the crook uh, for the fins attach. And uh, <clears throat> it's going to be the same as the last time. This will be the last time we do this type of decrease. And then we'll just get into normal decreases after this. So, so your first bunch of stitches you're going to do 20 single crochets this is bring it over to this area uh, between the body and the fin where we're going to do an SC3 tog again so 20 single crochets So that's my 20 single crochets. I'm going to do an SC3 tog again. And then I'm going to do eight single crochets. So that is eight single crochets. Um, I am near the top of the fin and I want to do my de another decrease here. So an SC3 tog. The top of mine is right in this next stitch. So you're kind of on that little side top. <laughs> so now I want you to do 11 single crochets. This is helping to kind of just shape this fin. And we're back to where the crook is and we're going to do an SC3 tug. Now I want you to do 17 single crochets. So 
So we're near the crook and we're going to do an SC three tog again. And then nine single crochets. So I'm near the top. I'm going to do an SC3 tug again. And then 10 single crochets. And then an SC3 tug again. So I have two stitches left. I don't know if you'd have any stitches left. I didn't actually write any more stitches down. So I'm just going to put two single crochets in each, or one single crochet in each of those stitches. So, so this is what you should have at this point. That's what it should look like. So for your next round, you're gonna do one single crochet in each stitch all the way around and then we're just going to keep decreasing from there So you're, we're going to start decreasing. You should have 83 stitches. So we're going to start decreasing, regular decreases. So um, none of this SE 3 tog business anymore. We're going to do, and in between our decreases, we're going to do one row of one single crochet in each stitch. So I'm going to put that on a pause screen just to make the video a little bit quicker with all my counts. Um, but your decreases, you're not going to get all the way around with the numbers that we have. You're going to get eight times around and you're going to have three extra stitches. And you're going to do that for every single decrease. It's going to be the same. So don't fret thinking you have all these extra stitches. You don't. You should have the extra stitches. So I'm probably, I'm not going to go into eight times around every single time that we do this. I'm just going to tell you what the decrease is. So just know that when your pause screen comes up, you're gonna have your decrease row and then you're gonna have the next round on there, which is one single crochet in each stitch. So just so you know, there's gonna be two rows listed on your pause screens. So your first decrease round is going to be eight single crochet decrease. And this will bring you down to 75 stitches. That is my eight single crochets get under both pieces. And then I'm still doing invisible decreases, but you can do whatever decrease you want to do. So I'm back around, uh, I've got my row of one single crochet in each of my 75 stitches. So my next decrease row is going to be seven single crochet decrease. And this will bring you down to 67 stitches. That's number one. That's seven single crochets, and then your decrease, and repeat. So this is what it should look like, just probably smaller if you're using a four weight yarn, but if you're using, I mean, it still should have the same shape is my point. So this is the tippy tops of the fins. So we're coming into his butt 
now. So your next round is going to be six single crochets and a decrease. And this will bring you down to 59 stitches. So we have another decrease and then another row of one single crochet in each stitch and then we're going to put our eyeballs in. So this next round is going to be five single crochets and a decrease. Hi, so we're going to put some eyes in. So this is my four weight little guy. And do you see these holes? So this is where when I was, when we first started and we did our um, in the round work. So I'm just above there with my eyes, just a couple of rows above where I started my initial chain. So that's the idea of um, where we're going with the eyes. So if you're doing a big guy like me, these here on the little guy, so on four weight yarn, um, these I believe are 12 millimeter eyes. On the big guy that I'm making here, I've got some uh, 16 millimeters. 16 millimeter guys and I think they're gonna be okay I haven't actually tried them so I don't know what they're gonna look like so find the spot where you worked in the round and then just kind of go up one or two rows just try to stay in the same row that's not bad so I'm only up, yeah, the second one. So this is the first chain that I did because I can see my little round spots from where I did, from where I worked in the round. And then, so one, the second, the second row up. So initially I said 11 rows or 11 stitches apart. So that's why I did my little guy here was 11 stitches apart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Sorry, I don't know if he was in the way or not. So I'm going to count this row below. And they have to be visible stitches. Let me get something to count with. Where's my hook? I'm to count with my little needle. So they have to be visible stitches. So count these bumps here. One, two, three, four, five. 9, 10, 11. Oh, I got 12. I counted wrong. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 12. Yeah, it works. Mine are 12 here, but accounting has been a problem throughout this entire project, apparently. So um, when I made this guy, I write a pattern. So I sit in front of the TV with my husband and I write patterns. Sometimes my numbers are a little off. So when I do the videos, I'm like, wait a minute. That doesn't add up right. And then I kind of got to wing it through. <laughs> I kind of got to change numbers around as I go. But ultimately it ends up looking like it should. But this one seems to be expe exceptionally bad. And I don't know. Oh, I can't get the back on that. I don't know if it's because of the yarn that I'm using that I'm, I'm kind of going into the same stitch with two stitches or if I'm missing stitches. But... My, my counts have all been off, so... But at the end of the day, I'm not as anal as some people. At the end of the day, it's still going to look like a stingray. Some people would freak out if they were off by one stitch, but at the end of the day, it's still going to look like a stingray. So this is what you should have at this point. Let's continue with our decreases because this is so much fun. Our next decrease is going to be four single crochets and a decrease. You can start stuffing this at any time too. Now that we have the eyes on, you can start stuffing this at any time. 
So four single crochets and a decrease all the way around. We're still doing our same usual one single crochet in between. So I just finished my one single crochet in each stitch. You should have 43 stitches and your next decrease round is going to be three single crochets and a decrease. So I am done my decrease round. So we're going to change it up a little bit. You should have 35 stitches. For the next two rows, I want you to put one single crochet in each of these 35 stitches. Um, I'm going to stuff mine before I start doing these next couple rows. So when we meet back, um, you'll notice that mine is going to be stuffed. So for the next two rows, one single crochet in each of these 35 stitches and I will see you on the other side. So uh, our next rounds, we're, we're going to be doing the two rows. We're going to be doing that in between um, our next one too. So our next decrease is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. And then you're going to follow that up with two rows of one single crochet. So mine is very large. <laughs> mine is taking a lot to stuff. He is absolutely, he feels really nice though. It's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So <laughs> let's bring you back down here. So we're still decreasing. <laughs> so we're going to do one single crochet and a decrease. And you're wondering how are we still decreasing because we're at one single crochet decrease. We go back into a higher number of de decreases just for the tail part. So this decrease is just kind of getting the butt to be the size that we need it to be to go into the tail. So after this decrease round, I want you to do four rows of one single crochet in each stitch. I will meet you back here after all five rows are complete. So that's my four rows done. Your next round is going to be four single crochets and a decrease. So now we want to make small decreases. So we go up in number. So for the next four rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each stitch. So you currently should have 15 stitches. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and a decrease. So your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 12 stitches. So 
So your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. So that is nine stitches. So for your next round, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these nine stitches. All right, one more decrease. One single crochet decrease. So, we got six stitches for the next ten rows. You're just going to put one single crochet in each of these six stitches. And remember to kind of uh, stuff as you go. And then you can fasten off. That'll be the end of this because that's his tail. His long, skinny little tail. So, for the next ten rows, six stitches. I'll see you on the other side. So, um, because I'm using this chunky yarn, I, uh, I only did five rows and I'm fastening off. Um, I'm not using four weight yarn, so I don't need to do the ten rows. But it's completely up to you how long you want your tail, right? So this is, you know, the, the last bit of the project. So it's completely your choice, um, what you want what you want the tail, uh, see if I can zoom out some more, what you want the tail to be. So I didn't really stuff the end of this, this part here. I didn't stuff it. I did put a lot of stuffing into that spot, but um, I want to be able to, you know, have his tail carve around and stuff like that. So that's just my preference. So we're just going to cinch this end closed. But again, it's completely up to you how long you want your tail. So, once you get it cinched... So cinching is just in the front loop, out the front loop, in and out, in and out, all the way around. And then I'm just going to make a couple of knots, just for added security. And then weave down and around. So don't pull too hard on that. So again, I didn't uh, stuff the very tippy end of it. There we go. That was a hard guy to stuff. He's pretty big. So there's my... <laughs> there's my... Oh, he's upside down. There's my uh, stingray. The big guy. So, thanks for joining me, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video and the fact that you have... You know, you can see the options between doing one with the... with the bulky... Um, really soft I think my grandson's probably going to use this for a pillow but uh, it is super soft with this yarn the size difference <laughs> let me zoom out there's the size difference I can't even get this whole guy whole big guy in I moved my computer yeah I still can't that's the end of his tail so that's the size difference between a four weight and a chunky yarn and the exact same pattern.
Thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you in the next video.